Center, anybody that's involved in children's ministry, please think of that meeting. Um, due to Memorial Day, the children's choir will meet Tuesday, right after school. The church bus will be there to pick your kids up from school. So no children's choir tomorrow, but we will have children's choir Tuesday.
kindergarten and sixth grade graduates. If you're with us this morning and you're in kindergarten and you're graduating, would you please stand? Nobody? Anybody? There's one back there on the back row. How about a hand clap for him? Sixth grade. If you're graduating sixth grade, would you please stand? Thank you. If you have graduated college, would you please stand and recently? Not some of us have graduated, but you. <laughs> At this time, we would like to recognize the Marion County High School seniors. It's been a long road, but you finally made it. Congratulations. I will call them out individually, and we have a gift that we will present to them at this time. Are they in any order? Okay, you may. Jacob Webb Gregg. Andrew Garrett Hollis. Mary Beth Waits. And Allison Page Webb. How about a hand clap for those? Also at this time, we are very blessed in this church to have Mr. and Miss Olene, excuse me, Mr. Jean and Miss Olene Rollins. Would y'all please stand and be recognized? Thank you very much. <laughs> Mr. Jean and Miss Olene Rollins, members of our church, who have generously funded our $2,500 college scholarship this year through FBC Gwin. They established the Gene and Olene Rollins Scholarship in 2007 and have been responsible for getting a number of high school graduates off to a great start in college since that time. Mr. and Ms. Rollins are graduates of Hamilton High School, the University of North Alabama, and the University of Alabama, and both are retired from their careers with Alabama Power Southern Company. It is the Rollins' desire to help deserving students continue their education at schools of their choice. Thank you, Mr. and Ms. Rollins. It is my pleasure to announce the four Marion County High School seniors who have been selected to receive the Gene and Olene Rollins Scholarship this year. These particular students attend other churches, but if they are present with us at FBC today, I would ask them to stand where they are and remain standing as I call out the names of these recipients. Taylor Marie Rudy. Kayla Zane Smith. Kiara McKinley Tucker and Kelsey Webb. A hand clap for these four. <laughs> these students will be recognized again at the MCHS graduation on May the 29th. Thank you. You may be seated. We pray a special blessing over these seniors, and later in the service we will have an opportunity to bring these forward and bring their families forward, and we'll have a time of prayer for them as they embark on their future. Thank you. Zane was doing such a great I'm glad. Zane was doing a great job. I thought he'd go ahead and do the music. I cued the tape back there for him to go ahead and sing the special for us. Where'd he go? Let's all stand together and sing. This being Memorial Day weekend, let's sing the Battle Hymn of the Republic. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He hath loosed the faithful lightning of his terrible 
bones with sore. His truth is marching up. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. In the beauty of the lilies, Christ was born across the sea with a glory in his bosom that transfigures you and me. He has guided, make men holy. Let us live to make men free while God is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Our God is marching on. He is coming like the glory of the morning on the wave. He is wisdom to the mighty. He is honor to the brave. So the world shall be his footstool and the soul of wrong his slave. Our God is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Our God is marching on. Lord in heaven, we thank for you today, Jesus, that you are our God and you're our Savior, Lord. This time of remembrance for those uh, men that have served and those that have gone on to glory father we remember them today and we know that God you're the author and the finisher of all our faith and Lord you've established this nation we know fact that you this is a godly nation Lord and we as Christians must stand today and realize this, we've got to take our stand to establish it to the the generations to come that God we stand with you. Your people stand with you. And Lord, in heaven, I pray, Jesus, today that throughout this service that we can be in remembrance of those that have served, those who have risked their lives and even lost their lives for our freedoms, Jesus. And Lord, we especially, above all, remember you, what you've done for us. You died for us, Lord, that we can live free. We can have a holy life through you. And God, we praise you for everything that is accomplished through this service today. And we give you honor and glory and praise for it all. For it's in Christ's name we do pray. Amen. You might be seated. When I look into your holiness When I gaze into your loveliness When all things that surround become shadows in the light of you When I found the joy of reaching your heart When my will becomes enthroned in your love When all things that surround become shadows in the light of you I worship you I worship you The reason I live Is to worship you I worship you I worship you 
worship you. The reason I live is to worship you. Let's sing it again. When I look into your holiness, when I gaze into your loveliness, when all things that surround become shadows in the light of you, When I found the joy of reaching your heart When my will becomes enthroned in your love When all things that surround become shadows in the light of you I worship you I worship you The reason I live Is to worship you I worship you You are my God I worship you I worship you the reason I live is to worship you. And the church said, Amen. Worship with the choirs we sing.
We're so glad to have Katie Shirley and her brother. What you Andy, Katie and Andy here today. Uh, Andy, I mean, uh, Katie is not doing this by surprise. Someone in our choir back here told me that Katie would come up and sing for us, and she was totally shocked. Was not prepared, but now, Katie, you are prepared, right? And you're not shocked. <laughs> We're good, good to have them today. Call me out upon the water, the great unknown, my feet may fail, and there I find you in the mystery, in oceans deep, my faith will stand. I will call upon your name And keep my eyes above the waves Where oceans rise My soul will rest in your embrace For I am yours And you are mine Your grace abounds in deepest water Your sovereign hand will be my guide Where feet may fail and fear surround me You never fail and you won't start My soul rest in your embrace For I am yours And you are mine oh, And you of my Savior. Spirit, lead me when my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon your waters wherever you would call me. And take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. And my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my is without borders let me walk upon your waters wherever you would call me take me deeper than my feet could ever wander my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my time. 
Cause my soul rests in your embrace For I am yours And you are mine And you are This morning we are on the eve of Memorial Day. We as a church family, we as Americans would be remiss if we did not take this moment to pause and remember the sacrifices of so many it occurred to me as we were sitting here that these high school seniors, all of their time in school, they've never known what it was like for our nation to not be at war because we have had the longest running war going on in Afghanistan that the United States has ever known. Last November, we had a very special celebration that many of you were able to be a part of where we honored veterans. It was our honor to do that. One of the men who was with us for that celebration was a survivor of the Battle of the Bulge. Mr. Flippo passed away on Friday and will be buried tomorrow. Please remember that family. Right now, if you would, please bow your heads. Join me in a time of reflection and thanksgiving for the sacrifices, those who might not have intended to give up their lives, but always knew that it was a possibility, and they served faithfully. Let's pause to remember them. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, if you would like to look with me there this morning, I'd uh, like to preface this by asking, how many of you have ever been or, or now in love? Y'all invented it, didn't you? See, that's, uh, we, we have a fascination in, in the United States with, with love and, and, and you know, it's all, look, I've been there. I remember when Phyllis and I were dating, I would, I would wake up in the morning with her on my mind. I would go to sleep at night with her on my mind. And if I woke up in the middle of the night, she was on my mind. When I was at work, she was on my mind. It, it, Y'all, it's just, if you've ever been there, 
uh, you know what it's like when you got it real bad, right? It, it's, I mean, that's a uh, uh, matter of fact, uh, I have over the years written a love song or two. Uh, I'm going to spare you this morning. I'm not going to, I'm not going to sing those, but I would like to uh, get you to help me just a little bit here. Now, some of y'all that are too young and won't remember this, uh, just, you know, just humor me for a minute, all right? Uh, I want you to fill in the blank, church, and, and when I get right there, I want you to uh, sing it like you mean it. Everybody's ready. What the world needs now is... Boy, y'all got that. I'm telling you, that's a... That's, and harmonies, too. That's just off the cuff. That, 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 was, that was great. Uh, here, here's another one for you. All you need is... All right, y'all been listening to the Beatles. I know it. That's a, a, okay, uh, we, 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 we get it. Love, it's, 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 we are focused on that, but our love is so imperfect, and our love is so incomplete. And the only thing that we know about love really is because we have experienced the genuine thing. And I'm talking about the love that God gives to us. This morning in the book of Jeremiah, there's a detailed description about that in verse 3 of chapter 31. If we know anything about love, we, we understand that we understand it better if we go to the most perfect source of love that there really is. Jeremiah pens these words according to the inspiration of God. The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Join me in prayer. Father, today we recognize Jesus as the author and the finisher of our faith. We recognize you today as the source of true and pure and everlasting love. We thank you for that. Bless this time together today. Minister the needs of our hearts with your word. And draw us close. And love us. And help us to love you more. In Jesus' name. A little girl was playing with her dolls. and uh, Some little girls collect dolls. Y'all ever notice that? They, they have more dolls than you could possibly ever use in a lifetime. Uh, have more dolls than you could possibly ever play with at one time. Little girl had them all cuddled up around her, and one by one she would grab them up. She'd wrap her arms around them, and she would hug them tight. And, and her mother came in, and she said, Oh, Mommy, I just love them and love them and love them, and they don't love me back. thought about that and I've wondered in my own life how many times God looks at us and with a heart that only God could have he says to himself I love them and I love them and I love them and they don't love me back let's be honest our lives is that what they're saying? That He loves us, but we don't really love Him back. To know Him indeed is to love Him. But there are depths and there are degrees of our love. We make promises that 
We will love someone forever, but sometimes we don't keep those promises. Beloved, I want to say to you this morning that our God made a promise from everlasting unto everlasting that He had loved us, would love us with an everlasting love, and He didn't quit. The same God that loved then still loves now with that same kind of unalterable love. For you see, uh, by definition, God is love. In the book of 1 John chapter 4, verse 8, we find there, He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Skip down chapter 4, verse 16, and we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. I mentioned to you early, earlier in the message that our love here is imperfect at best. But God loves us with a perfect love. And by evidence of that, all we have to think about is the perfect love that God displayed to us when He sent His only begotten Son into this world. He didn't do that because He needed something to do. He did that because there was you and there was me. And we had no hope of eternal life without Jesus Christ and the sacrifice that he was going to make. It was God's perfect love that sent him into this world. It was Jesus' perfect love that kept him on the cross until he could say with authority, it is finished. It's complete. It was done. The Word of God is filled with examples of this perfect love. It's filled with with examples of how God loved His people with a perfect love. Didn't require a lot. He didn't ask that they keep the light on for Him. He didn't ask that they keep supper in the stove and warm until He got home. He just asked that his people love him in return. That is love at its greatest. I would say today that uh, we have plenty of practice of falling in love. I believe what we need to practice today is rising up in love. Loving the Father in heaven. Just a little bit of how He's loved us. I, I stand amazed today that God has chosen to love us. Made a choice to love us. Not because I deserved it. Not because... You deserved it, not because we were so good that we merited it, but because of His mercy and grace, He recognized they are helpless without me. I choose to love them. What a choice, and how thankful we ought to be for that choice today. It was God's perfect will that brought Jesus into the world. It was God's perfect will that saw Him to that cross. It was Jesus' perfect love and perfect plan of God that He would stay there and get the job done for us. In John chapter 15, verse 13, there is a passage that I would remind you of. And no more fitting day than the day before Memorial Day, that we remember this passage of Scripture where Jesus taught about love. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. There has never been a 
greater display of impassioned love than when Jesus gave his life for me. When Jesus gave his life for you. And I would say to you from the depths of my heart this morning, you can by your choice, leave this world without Christ. You can, by your choice, leave this world in a lost condition with your soul bound for an eternity, separated from God in what I believe to be a real and literal hell. You can choose that. Listen to me. If you choose to go that way, you will walk across the blood of Jesus Christ to get there. Because that blood was shed so that you might have your sins forgiven. Beloved, that is love. The book of Matthew chapter 22, verse 37, there's another aspect of love. Jesus said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. Book of Deuteronomy, chapter 10, verse 12. And now, Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? But to love the Lord thy God, to walk in all His ways and to love Him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. That is the Word of God. What I know about love I learned from the God who loved me. What I know about faithfulness, I learned from the God who proved himself faithful to me. What I know about forgiveness, I learned from the God who forgave me of my sins. And what I know about theology can best be summed up in a few short words of a very simple song that everybody knows. Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. We try to complicate it and we try to make it something that it's not, but that's what it is. Jesus loves me. And I have the authority of God's Word to back that up this morning. Over and over and over again, His Word cries out in very dramatic fashion, I love you. I love you. I love you. We, we love love. We are fascinated by it. We, we tend to, uh, to think that we've got it all figured out until we realize one day that we really don't. I think it was Adrian Rogers that had a radio program for a long time, Love Worth Finding. I would remind you this morning of a different kind of love, not just worth finding. I would remind you of a love that is worth giving. And that's the kind of love that God taught us to have. And if we would learn to, to give that kind of love, the first thing that we must do is receive that love into our hearts. Uh, if you've never been in love, you can't tell anybody what it feels like. Could I just be honest? Even if you've been in love, you can't tell somebody what it feels like uh, because it's one of those things that you just, you, you have a hard time finding descriptors for that. 
but we need to receive the love of God. And the first step for that is by faith. By faith, through the grace of God, receive the gift of God, which is eternal life through His Son, Jesus Christ. You receive that. That kind of love that you have received becomes for you a love that is worth giving to someone else. We also need to reciprocate that love. It is, it is one thing, folks, to, to sing that song and, and to say, Jesus loves me. I submit to you that it's totally something else for you to say, I love Jesus. It's when we give back that love that's been given to us that we have that love that is worth giving. The first great command, love Him with our heart, with our soul, with our mind, with our strength, all that we have and all that we are simply to love Him. And that means, beloved, that we place our everyday life constantly before His throne of grace. Not just the big things. I'm talking about the everyday things. I know that uh, none of you ever wake up and get started in the morning and find yourself frustrated over something. Maybe I need to rephrase that. I know that none of you other than school teachers uh, wake up in the morning and find yourself frustrated over something uh, unless you're married and then maybe you... Never mind, I won't finish that thought. We, uh, uh, yes, we wake up sometimes and we find ourselves frustrated and sometimes we're not the most lovable people in the world. Y'all don't look at me like that. Just nod your head every once in a while. Sometimes we're not the, uh, uh, <laughs> we're not the most easy to get along with people in the world. Uh... My wife would say to me, and has said to me, you don't mind very well. Hey, y'all are laughing. Wait till you get home. <laughs> uh, we need to learn to love more. We need to learn to love better. And the only way that we are going to get there is to be exposed with the source of true, pure, and everlasting love. And that is the love of our God. One other thing, and I will close this morning. We receive that love and we reciprocate that love. The best way for that love to get around is if you and I would simply recycle that love. Give it back. Give it away. Jesus demonstrated His love by very humble service. He demonstrated His love by acts of self-sacrifice and giving. stands to reason if you've received that love from Him and if you have honestly said to Him, I love you it stands to reason this morning that you would want to share that love with someone else Jesus said the world would know that you are a Christian by your love. Am I ever going to be a, a perfect human being in this life? No. Not going to happen. My love, though I may have a lot of it, not going to be perfect in this life. but I received it from someone who is perfect. 
I received it from someone who knew how to give. And the very best thing that I can do today is to give that back. I wanted to do that very deep sermon, seniors. For those of you who will be leaving, some of you will be going off to college, I wanted to leave you with that, with that one profound statement that, that just about the time you were about to mess up, you would remember what the preacher said. I want to leave you with that profound statement. This is one that you can hang your hat on. This is one that when the temptation to walk away from your faith comes, and it will, when you are challenged about your faith, that you'll be able to stand. This is that statement that I want you to take with you. Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible, tells me so. Let's pray. Father,